Well, good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in sunny Central California. Uh, the weather has sure changed quick. Um, this last week it was in the 90s. This week it's in the 70s. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Fall has begun finally. We'll probably get about two weeks of that before it gets really cold, and then it'll be winter. We, we're not big on four seasons here in the Central Valley. Uh, there's basically four seasons. There's heat, there's dust, there's fog, and there's cold. That's the four seasons. Um, anyway, that's not why I'm here to talk to you today. Um, I, since we're doing a lot of conversions over to fabric and setting up new switches on fabric, um, I thought I would, uh, and I got to apologize. It's, I'm in the, our MDF. It's kind of noisy in here. Um, and engineering's calling me on the radio. Anyway, um, so I thought I'd show you what, uh, what a switch config looks like. Um, it's, it's scrubbed. So, you know, you guys out there that are thinking, aha, I know what his internal IPs look like. Well, yeah, it's just, it's a pretty common IP scheme, you know, but uh, you, you wouldn't learn too much from it. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, where am I doing it? Right here. There we go. Share that. Okay. So this really isn't a template. It is the actual config of the switch. I start out with a template. It looks pretty much like this. Um, you'll notice a lot of this is highlighted in green. Um, basically what I do is um, before I put it in, I just, you know, I come up with the config and then as I enter each portion of the config, I'll go through here and uh, I will highlight it so that I know that I put those commands in. So that's, that's why they're in green. I use green because that means that command has been successfully entered. So when I set up a switch, first thing I do is set up the management IP on it. And I also delete all the ports from the default VLAN. I don't want the ports in any VLAN at all. Nothing. Zero zip, nada. Um, I'll create my management VLAN, which in our case is 100. And then I will give that uh, VLAN an IP address. It's just pretty easy. You know, you just say configure VLAN manage, give it the IP address and the subnet mask. And then you set up the default route, point to the default gateway for that subnet. Here we enter the system name. Here we enable secure shell and disable telnet. Uh, my switches do DNS resolution, not for clients, but just for themselves. And uh, this, these are the commands for setting that up. Configure DNS client, add name server, and you can add I don't know, five or six of them, I, I can't remember. And the reason I, I add the name server is because of SNTP. So my SNTP servers, I use the uh, NIST uh, servers out on the internet. So I just point my network time servers to zero.pool.ntp.org and one.pool.ntp.org. And I got that, that info from ntp.org. And then the very next command is to enable the SNTP client. So go out there to that server and get the time. Um, then I set up the time zone. Then I set up SNMP, SNMP v3. And then I disable all the SNMP defaults. Just delete them, get rid of them, disable them. Um, at this point, if there's a new firmware image, I update it. This is not the latest firmware here. This, this is all put in from a template. So um, yeah, I just changed it to the new firmware image right here and uh, put in the IP address of my server. So node alias, what I do is I enable node alias on all my ports. Um, there's several different varieties of node alias you can enable on extreme exhaust. There's DHCP, there's MSDNS, there's, uh, I don't know, UDP. 
there, there's a bunch of different ones. So I disable all those protocols. The only ones I want to know about is the IP protocol. So if I so, so if I issue the command show node alias port one, it'll show me the IP address of the device connected on that port. Um, it also helps when I put my, my uh, Fluke network tool in, um, I plug it in, it'll tell me the uh, switch info that it sees on that port. Um, actually, this isn't part of that, sorry. But this will tell me what's connected to my ports and I enable that on all my ports. So I can do a show, show neighbors and, and I'll see what's really there. LLDP, that's what tells my little fluke tester uh, what switch it's connected to. So on all the ports, it'll advertise all the TLDs, TLDSs. Um, so switch name, switch IP address, link name, you know, all that good stuff. So that uh, if I put my link runner on there, I, I can see what I'm connected to. Um, this command is kind of gives me back the configuration that I had in the old X extreme switches, where you could just assign a new VLAN on the fly. Where with XOS, you've got to remove the VLAN first and then assign it. With this command, uh, auto move, you can just work just like the old switches. When you assign the new VLAN, it'll just put up a thing that says it's been automatically removed from the old VLAN and moved to the new one. So that's, um, that's what I use that port for or that command for. Um, sorry, I got up early today. We did a power test. I'm a little, a little draggy today. So sharing, this is basically, I think in the Cisco world, you guys would call it trunking or multi-link trunk. Um, in the extreme world, we call it a lag or a link aggregate or aggregate link. Um, this is the command for that. So you enable sharing on port 49. So that's the port that's going to control the group. And then I, I'll tell it what groups I want. I want ports 49 through 50, 51, 52. So four ports in this uh, aggregated group. I want it to use address-based layer 2 LACP. Because that's what ISIS, SPPM, it's all layer 2. So that's, that's what I want to use here. And uh, LACP, link aggregation, control pro protocol. That's what we use here. A so very simple command gives you a lot of, <laughs> a lot of bandwidth to the switch. It's actually much easier in, than the, uh, the old extreme switches. Uh, you, there were two, at least two commands you had to do to set this up, maybe a little bit more. I can't remember. Um, I also set up a, a login banner just in case somebody does get my switch, let them know that if I find them, they're in trouble. And then this is where I basically set up my, the VLANs that I'm normally going to be using on this switch. Um, this particular switch... Uh oh, something's not behaving. Uh, this particular switch is going to be a uh, um, copper rack switch, and it's going to be connecting our firewall. So we've got a lot of firewall connections, a lot of firewall VPNs that I'm setting up here, VPNs, VLANs that I'm setting up here. Uh, this is where I create them and assign the uh, VLAN number. So create VLAN. System stable. Yay, it's back up, whatever it is. Um, so create VLAN pan inside, that's the inside interface of my firewall, Palo Alto Networks. And the VLAN tagging it's gonna use is 224. Easy as that. And then all the other configurations I use, I can either refer to the VLAN as pan inside, or I can refer to it by the, the uh, VLAN number, either one. So it's kind of cool. So these are all of the VLANs that I've set up on this particular one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this, this, I didn't have the create, but trust me, they're there. Okay, so here's where the fabric rubber hits the road. So these VLANs I've created up here, let's start first with the management VLAN. This is the command I use to assign the ICID, independent service identifier, to that VLAN. And this ICID is how all this VLAN traffic is referred to within the fabric. 
So uh, we we are we put a prefix of 1201 on everything, and then the VLAN number follows. So VLAN 100 is 1201 0100. Ooh, I gotta fix that. But I checked the VLAN. There is no VLAN 223. It's VLAN 224. So I will fix that. Anyway, we just go down the line, creating all the VLANs and assigning the ICIDs. Uh, the older command was network service identifier. Um, when you issue the command, you can either say network service identifier, NSI, or you can say ICID, either one. I just stuck with the old terminology. And I am gonna mark this as not complete. I am going to remove the highlighting till I fix that. All right, then I go through and then I uh, <clears throat> label the ports, alias the ports. So uh, here's the command to do it, configure port one, display, display string, and then you put in the whatever label you want it to have. And then I go ahead and assign that port to a VLAN, untagged. <clears throat> so you add it to the VLAN, it's much like Cisco, um, where you add the ports to the VLAN, where the older Enterosis and Extreme, you added the VLAN to the port. It's just six one half dozen of the other, but this is the way we do it. So add all the ports into the, the VLANs I want. Um, one thing I don't show you here that I did do is I um, tagged all these VLANs. All these VLANs got tagged on port 49. So that way the uh, fabric proxy and the switch will advertise those out into the fabric and uh, it'll know that you know, we got some, we got these VLANs are also on this switch here. So just, just like any other switch, you gotta, you gotta tag all the VLANs on the uplink. That's my uplink. So all of these VLANs are tagged there. All right, talked about that. Here, I set up spanning tree as well. These are the commands to do it. I'm not a spanning tree aficionado. I wish I was, um, but basically, we, uh, and with the extreme, you tell it what VLANs you want it to participate in this spanning tree domain. And I basically told them I want it all. And I told them I don't want it to do any spanning tree for my uplink ports right there. And then, oops, forgot to take my uh, admin password out, but <laughs> if you saw it, well, there you go. I'll change it. Um, then the last thing I do, the very last thing I do to make sure everything's, I make sure everything's working right. And then I go back in and change the default admin password. So. There you go. That's, that's how I do these things. So like I said, I, this is a template that I keep and it looks pretty much like this. I just go through and I change the IP address. I change the, the specifics for this switch. And then I just start cutting and pasting. Um, so I have a library of switch configurations, at least the initials. And then I've also got my uh, extreme management console, which goes out and backs up the switches every night. So uh, as the switches change, I've got a copy of that in my uh, extreme management. I can, I can see what's changed overnight. So that's how we do configuration here. So let's stop sharing this. There we go. So anyway, that's it guys. I uh, hope you found that uh, informative or entertaining or uh, laughable or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's it. I'm gonna go check and see how everything did on the power outage and uh, power test. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. God bless everybody. We'll catch you later. Bye.